I love that compassion is the radiating face of membership within the human race. Today is the auction sermon. It's fairly common in Unitarian Universalist circles for a minister to offer a sermon topic in the annual auction and the high bidder gets to choose the topic of the sermon. And um, Gray Simpson won the sermon. He was, Gray was the high bidder last year. And uh, Cecilia Eberhard liked the topic so much that Cecilia also went in halvesies, I believe, with Gray to choose the topic. And the topic that I was given was altruism. And I think there's a little bit of irony in a sermon on altruism, a sermon that was bid on that the, so, so a winner gets to choose it and the topic being altruism, especially, especially when there are parameters around this sermon because the winner only gets to choose the topic, not how the, the minister uh, presents the topic, not, not the minister, not the point of view of the topic, just the topic at hand. So um, it might do good. I hope it does some good. But there's definitely some self-interest. And that's not necessarily a bad thing either, but there's definitely some self-interest going on here. And um, I, I just, I find that amusing. I hope you do too. So let's, let's talk about what we mean by altruism in the, in the first place. I got some notes from Gray on what they would like me to talk about or what they were thinking about in, in terms of altruism. And it had a lot to do with charitable giving. And I think that's great as far as it goes. And Gray talked about how much Gray and Cecilia paid for the sermon and what, what they would get out of the sermon, but versus how much money, how, how much good that money could do in other places. And there's some things to think about there. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure that that really gets at the heart of what altruism is. So what do we mean by altruism? Well, perhaps you've heard the, the saying, I aspire to be the person my dog thinks I am. And that's one of the reasons I, I chose today's story of uh, Madeline's rescue. You know, animals often will do things, I don't, I, we don't know their, their motivation, but will do things that are extraordinary and helpful and, and very brave um, with no perceived benefit to them. And we might consider that that's altruistic. Let's look at the, a dictionary definition of altruism. And this is from dictionary.com. The principle or practice of unselfish concern for or devotion to the welfare of others, as opposed to egoism. Or in animal behavior, behavior by an animal that may be to its disadvantage, but that benefits others of its kind as a warning cry that reveals the location of the caller to, as in a warning cry that reveals the location of a, a, the caller to a predator. So in our story this morning, Genevieve jumping into the, to the river Seine to save a little girl that the dog had never met before might be considered altruistic behavior. Madeline is not even part of the dog's pack, but a member of the larger of society at large. And by this definition, we could say is an altruistic act. It's important that we all speak 
the same language, and I don't mean English here. I mean that we are all speaking in the same rule book, as it were, when we're talking about terms like this. So I'm going to bring up a philosopher who has been my bane since, since I studied anything at all about philosophy, but who I end up continually going back to, and that is Derrida. And if you've ever studied philosophy, you know what I mean. And if you've never studied philosophy, don't worry, I'm going to give you the basics. Derrida talks about what do you mean by that word? We all have to know what we mean by every word that we're using. What do you mean by what do you mean? So when we're talking about altruism, do we mean on balance it has to be unselfish concern for as opposed to egoism? Can, can there be any self-interest at all? Or does it have to be completely devoid of any self-interest in order for it to be altruism? I don't think it has to be completely devoid of any self-interest. In practice, I don't, I don't really care. Is that terrible to say? I don't. And in fact, um, I had a, an argument with a social psychology professor once. And uh, in full disclosure, I really didn't like this professor. I, I think he was wrong. And um, he, he said that there was no such thing as altruism. Now, I, I, I need to tell you, because it's relevant to this, that he was a rather mean man. And he had a reputation for being a misogynist and being mean and uh, doing a lot of things that were generally in his own self-interest. I think he didn't believe that altruism was a thing because he could never experience that because he couldn't get outside himself and imagine doing anything for the common good because that's not what he did. He said that any act, any act that we consider altruistic, any act that, that we do for others has some level of self-interest in it. And therefore it's not altruism. I say he's splitting hairs. If on balance, it benefits others more than it benefits us. And that is our motivation because motivation is important. Then it's altruistic. And as an example, I wanna talk about heroes. Well, people that we tend to label as heroes. What do I mean by people that we call heroes? I mean, stories that we read in the newspaper of somebody who jumps in front of an oncoming train in order to pull somebody off of the train tracks. These stories have happened. Um, when when in, in the early 1980s, when the Air Florida plane crashed into the 14th Street Bridge and then into, into the Potomac River, there was a man on the riverbank who saw this and immediately went into the river and started swimming out. It was freezing, it was like February, I think, and started pulling passengers out of the, out of the river, pulling people out of the river. And he kept going back in and pulling people out and he eventually drowned, he died doing that. I don't think people who do those things have time to stop and think, how am I going to benefit from this? Even if it's just, I'll feel better for doing it. I'll pat myself on the back. I think they see it and they react and think I must do this. And the interesting thing about folks who have been labeled as heroes is when they are recognized and when they're called heroes, and this is true of people, often of people who are recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor, but all kinds of awards when they're recognized as heroes, what they typically say is, I'm not a hero. I was just doing what had to be done. I was just doing what needed to be done. I think that's altruism. I think that's real altruism. Now, that's in contrast to when we do things for our own self-interest, even when we don't realize 
that that's our prime motivation. Liz Theo Harris, the Reverend Liz Theo Harris is um, a minister who works in, in social justice and uh, with faith in, in action and, and uh, um, has worked a lot with um, Reverend Barber and, and doing a lot of, of um, social justice work and wrote a very interesting piece several years ago, um, essentially on toxic charity. And she talks about the kind of giving and the kind of charity where we do things in order to perpetuate the system, in order to keep it going so that we can continue to feel good about ourselves. So we don't work to end the problem. We prolong the problem so that we can continue to, for example, run a soup kitchen. Instead of working on the reasons that people have to go to a soup kitchen, we might in fact, perpetuate those systems of injustice. We might vote against things that would end that. We might elect officials who would change the dynamics and allow people to be self-sufficient. But we give to the soup kitchen and we volunteer at the soup kitchen. Or instead of, um, working to end homelessness by um, making affordable housing and changing, changing zoning laws and working to ensure that everybody can move into safe housing, safe housing, we enact not in my backyard type laws, but we, we continue to fund temporary homeless shelters and volunteer in temporary homeless shelters. Now, I'm not saying that we should stop giving to soup kitchens or stop staffing homeless shelters. While there is a need, those things have to happen. But we must examine what are our motivations. The most stark example of this, I will tell you, was when I worked for. Um, the company Fannie Mae, which uh, is a, a mortgage finance company, it doesn't, well, what they do doesn't, doesn't matter exactly, but uh, it's part of, the, part of the housing finance industry. And it was founded by the government in order to create a pool of money so more people could own houses. So the employees of Fannie Mae founded a huge Help the Homeless march in, in Washington, D.C., and uh, raised lots and lots of money for homeless causes. And um, we used to, we would raise lots of money, just the employees, and we'd give grants. And in that capacity, I visited one of the locations that we were looking at giving a grant to. And it was a, a, an emergency homeless shelter. And, a number of different churches were involved in it and it moved from church to church like every night it was in a different location and when we were talking to the to the people about it they told us how great it was for all the members of the churches because they felt so good about what they were doing and they were really having an opportunity to help but they never mentioned anything about the people that they were helping or how difficult it was for them to travel all over the city for, from night to night at a different place. And when I asked them, where was the shelter gonna be that night? They couldn't even tell me. And that was the moment that I had to examine myself. 
and re-examine for myself what my motivations were in some of the work that I was doing. Was I doing it so that I could feel good about helping other people? Or was it really the help that other people needed? Now, I'm not saying that we all have to be altruistic. We can't dictate motivation, but we can all examine our motivation. We can all examine where we're coming from and what our motivation is. Now, Maimonides outlines for us levels of charitable giving, and, and he focuses on, on giving charity, giving money, tzedakah, which, which comes from tzaddik, which is righteousness, and tzedakah is then later translated into, into uh, you knew you were gonna get a Hebrew lesson, right? Um, into charitable giving, which is money. But this can be translated beyond money into how we, how we conduct ourselves and how we give of ourselves, not just of our treasure. If we give grudgingly, well, we're still giving. But that highest level, to give before the problem arises, that's akin to doing the work that we need to do end the problems. That's akin to making legislative changes. Now, when we make those legislative changes, when we make it so that everybody has a safe home to live in, that means that we don't need a homeless shelter anymore. That means that in that case, we will have to find something else to do with our volunteer time. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? And that's why I'm asking you to examine your motivation. The poet, Mary Boren, tells us, when public, public spirit kicks in gear among the open-hearted, those who spring into the void, rejecting the veneer of halos glow, true colors taking wing. Compassion is the radiating face of membership within the human race. I think that's true. In times of deep need, in times of deep need, we do jump in. We roll up our sleeves. We say, what do you need? What do you need? And sometimes money is what's needed. And sometimes physical presence and being active is what's needed. And does it matter? Does it matter if we're doing it because we have truly altruistic motives and we're putting society first and others first, or we're doing it because it makes us feel good and that's our prime motivation. You know, I don't know that it does. I don't know that it does because the end result is, is primarily the same, but it's good to know for ourselves. It's good to ask ourselves, how come I'm doing that? I'm not asking you to jump into frozen rivers. I'm not asking you to jump onto train tracks. But I am asking you to be aware of the world around you. I am asking you 
when you do something because you've always done it this way, or it's what we do, to stop and say, I wonder why I'm doing this. I wonder why. It's not a bad thing to get something out of what we do. It's not bad. But isn't it a wonderful thing? Isn't it a wonderful thing? When we can all get something. When we all share. Now, I feel it's my duty because Gray pondered about this to say that, yes, sometimes our money could go further in one place than another. And it's okay. It's okay to not make every single decision based on that. It's okay to do something nice for yourself. It's okay to not be sure. We can tie ourselves up, ourselves up in knots with the what ifs. And Gray and Cecilia, I hope that your money on this sermon is well spent. Who knows what seeds are planted today? Who knows what will be ticked in someone's heart or mind? Let us go out and be the best that we can be. Let us go out and build the beloved community together. We don't need to worry about splitting hairs as to whether or not we derive any satisfaction from it at all. Wouldn't the world be a sad place if we never received satisfaction? But when we do build the beloved community together, when we stop and think about the needs of another, isn't that, isn't that the ultimate goal of altruism? <laughs>